Hi friends, Ms. Roni's back. This time I'm going to read for you the first couple of chapters of The Boy and the Spy by Felicia Rina. This is the same author as the beloved books Specky McGee, so I hope you enjoy this one. Let's have a read of the blurb first. Leap into the adventure of a lifetime. Things have never been easy for Antonio, but now it seems like the war will never end. So when Antonio is caught up in the dangerous world of freedom fighters and spies, will it change his life or destroy him? A thrilling story set against the backdrop of World War II from the best-selling author of the Specky McGee series. <sighs> Let's get started. Il Regazzo, the boy. The boy is running as fast as he can and right behind him is a German soldier. They charge through a flock of flapping pigeons. Halt, halt, the soldier bellows. He yells at the boy to stop, first in German, then Italian. Did you hear me? Stop or I will shoot you. But the boy doesn't stop. In fact, he runs faster, his scuffed and well-worn shoes pounding hard on the cobblestones. He smirks, remembering the picture he has drawn and stuck on the windscreen of a German officer's jeep. It's a perfect sketch of the leaders of Germany and Italy, Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. Their faces attached to the bodies of plump pigs wallowing in mud and muck. The boy turns down one of the side streets of the piazza. He charges to the bottom of the street, takes a sharp left and smacks hard into an old fisherman carrying a bucket filled with sardines. The tiny silver fish slide all over the ground, but the boy regains his balance and sidesteps the fisherman. Disgraziato, wretched kid, he hears the man shout. He sprints on and glances over his shoulder. The soldier is slipping over the sardines and wet cobblestones and has toppled over the fisherman. Safe, the boy thinks. Now I'll lose him. He takes the coast road that leads out of town. There's no sign of the soldier. The boy slows to a jog, then a walk. The Mediterranean Sea shimmers in the early afternoon light, turquoise and serene. But after a while, he hears the distant echo of an engine. A motorcycle appears over the ridge and comes speeding towards him. The boy swears and takes off again. He veers off the road and heads towards the craggy seaside side cliffs. Surely the soldier won't follow him there. But the German soldier dumps his bike and resumes the chase on foot. For a moment, the boy questions his actions. Was a funny drawing worth being arrested for or shot? In front of him is one of the highest cliffs in Sicily. The fishermen call it Il Diavolo, the devil. It has a curved ledge that protrudes over the surf. The men say it looks like the devil's horns. No one has ever jumped off Il Diavolo. No one has ever been that stupid. But now the boy has nowhere else to go. Could he jump? How could a 12-year-old boy survive a 42-metre drop into the sea? He remembers a time before the Germans arrived. He was only small, but he recalls when a professional cliff diver from Spain had come to dive off Il Diavolo. The whole town was there. They all thought the diver was crazy. The man had told them that the dive wasn't the hard part. It was the way you entered the surface of the sea. Enter it the wrong way and you might as well be diving into solid rock. Do it properly and you'll be all right. But even the diver had chickened out at the last minute. The boy slides to a dusty stop only metres from Il Diavolo's edge. He looks down and immediately feels dizzy and sick. Deep blue swells and rolling foamy waves crash up against the cliff far below him. He takes a wobbly step back and waits for the soldier to reach him. On the ground in front of him, he sees a silver pendant glinting in the sun. It's about the size of a thumbnail. He bends to pick it up and brushes off the dust. On it is an image of a saint, and propped on the saint's shoulder is the baby Jesus. It's San Cristoforo, Saint Christopher. The boy scoops it up and shoves it deep into his front pocket, for luck and for protection. The soldier is only metres away. He has fair skin, straw-like blonde hair and blue eyes. For the first time, the boy realises he's not much older than he is. He looks too young to be in uniform. So you thought you could outrun me, the soldier says in heavily accented Italian. He pulls out his pistol from his belt. You think you're so funny? You do realise that we're on the same side, don't you? Italy and Germany, the pact of steel, unless you're a traitor and you want the enemy to win. The boy didn't answer. 
His heart is thumping. There's nowhere to run except for a steep, narrow, steep, narrow, craggy path that leads all the way down to the sea. But then what? Be shot as he tries to climb down? The boy decides to stay put and face his destiny, whatever that will be. Answer me, says the soldier, raising his pistol and pointing at the boy. Don't make me shoot you. His voice is almost pleading. All you have to do is say sorry and we might let you go with a warning. Va bene? The boy feels a flash of anger. Why should I say sorry when I'm not? And then he thinks of his mama. What would it mean to her if he were caught, even if they let him off? The boy sighs. He didn't think it went he didn't think it through when he drew the picture. This would surely put his mama in danger, or at least put her under scrutiny by the Germans. They were already judged by everyone in town, seen as different from everyone else. How much worse would it be after he was marched back to town and accused of being a traitor? Was he really prepared to bring more shame on his mother? The boy steals a glance over the edge of the cliff. Yep, it's a long way down. Verst du mich? Capici? Do you understand me? The soldier moves slowly towards him. The boy is gripped by an intense familiar feeling of frustration and impulsiveness. It washes over him. He takes a deep breath, turns and jumps. Wow. What a brilliant first chapter. I'm so intrigued to know what happens next. What do you think? Will he survive? There's still that much left of the book, so I reckon he might have to. I am really excited to know if you would like to borrow this book from our school library. If you do, let me know and we can organise for you to borrow it. I'd love to chat to you about it afterwards too. Let me know what you think. Thanks for listening. See you later.